What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be talking about a question that I get on a very regular basis which essentially addresses networking. So a lot of you have seen me work with the PLC that's sitting behind me which is the Compact Logix L24ER series and the question that I get most often is to go into detail on how my network is set up and furthermore, how my RS Links configuration is set up and give you a bit more information on RS Links in general. So that's what we're going to do. I'm also going to show you kind of the way that I track my network. So as you can see, I do have quite a few wires going out of the PLC box to different devices that are inside of the PLC box. But also there's some of the wires going all the way up to the other cabinet where I also have different PLCs. I have different devices. I have a, a few computers. So I'm going to be explaining essentially uh, what I've done here at home and I'm going to be giving you some ideas of what you can do on a plant or a larger control systems uh, basis. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so this is the spreadsheet which I use to track all of my devices. And essentially, it's just a simple way to remind me what's at uh, every IP address because I do set them manually, which means that they're not automatically reconfigured. And so it takes, I guess, a lot of effort to track everything, but it's also very convenient to be able to see what's going on on the network and not have to look back at each device each, uh, each single time that I'm trying to connect. So fairly straightforward, the network IP is going to be 192.168.1.3Xs, which are going to be the last OC that is going to be in this column right here. But essentially, this should tell you immediately, immediately that first of all, I have 255 devices minus uh, two, of course, with the dot zero and dot 256. That being said, it is a private subnet, which is also indicated by the first three octets. So effectively, the way this is set up is that my laptop has a wireless connection to the uh, outside to the internet, essentially, and then everything else is connected through an ethernet port. And we'll look at that in a second. But let's um, kind of look at the different devices in detail. So you'll notice a couple of different components that I've used in my tutorials. So I have a Micrologix 1100 series PLC, and of course I have the part numbers listed here as well. I have some point IO stuff. I have some Stratic switches. I have a Compact Logix. Like I've said, this is the L24ER that you saw behind me sitting inside of that Pelican box. And what I also track, and this is a uh, essentially a copy paste of a spreadsheet that I would use in a production environment as well. So I track some of the uh, usernames and passwords for switches, for example, just uh, makes it easier to remember. And like I said, there's going to be a full array of this, uh, these IP addresses all the way down to uh, 255. And I can add anything I need. And I can then, of course, put the name. So it's just a basic spreadsheet, pretty much to track what I have on the network. That being said, let's go into the configuration of the laptop. So I'm going to log into my control panel and show you really quickly the setup there. So inside of the control panel, there's going to be a network and sharing center option. And depending, of course, on which version of the Windows you have this in Win Windows 7, Windows XP, and you go into adapter settings, and here's where you'll find all of the different adapters for your specific computer. And if you use something that only has a wireless adapter, then you can buy a dongle, which I'll also link maybe down below that has an ethernet port that I've used in the field many times. And so first of all, there's going to be a Wi-Fi. Like I said, this is my connection to the internet. So I can browse at the same time as I work with uh, different devices. And this is particularly useful, especially in a plant environment where you need to research something at the same time as you're connected to the PLC. You're not obviously switching back and forth. Now on the ethernet side, you can see that I have a couple of different adapters. A lot of them are based on VMware, which is essentially a virtual uh, machine setup. That being said, we, we are connected to my private network through this ethernet card and if i right click and go into properties and go into ipv4 you'll notice that i have a static ip address 
set as 192.168.1.200. And this, of course, references back to the network I have the PLC on. And this is extremely important because your laptop needs to be on the same subnet as your PLC if you want a uh, straight connection. Otherwise, if you have a setup which allows you to route the IP addresses differently, so that would be uh, a you would require like a Cisco switch or maybe a Stratic switch. Uh, that being said, that's going to be a little bit more complex, maybe at the plant level, that's going to be uh, different. That being said, let's go into RS links and I'm going to show you that as well. So if I drag out RS links, here's RS links classic light. And if I click on this little network button, you will notice that I have a lot of different drivers al already set up. So I want to show you two different ways that you can configure RS links in order to see your devices. So we're going to go into communications and then we're going to click on configure drivers. Here you'll find all the drivers currently on your device. What I am going to select though first is I'm going to select this ethernet devices and I'm going to hit add new. We're just going to leave the name as is. I'm going to click OK. And here you can add devices on an individual basis. So notice that if you have all these different devices and you don't know specifically, for example, what's going on on your network, then it's preferable to add a device on a single case basis because there's less of a chance of you to make the mistake. So if somebody told you you have a compact logics on 192.168.1.11, then you can go into your RS links and add it as such. So I'm going to just paste that in and add the dot 11. I'm going to hit apply. You'll notice that a second line pops up where you can essentially add as many devices as you want. So for example, if I add this uh, 12 here, sorry, 12, uh, whatever that may be, let's say that's the Stratic switch. I don't believe it's powered on, but in any case, we can say uh, apply or add new. And then I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to scroll down to that specific driver that we added, which was 21. And once the once RS links starts browsing, it should be able to find the devices that you have listed and the ones that are not present at that specific IP will be listed as unrecognized device. And you'll notice that there's going to be a red X, which typically means that there's no uh, communication to the device. Otherwise, it would be recognized in this tree. And if you browse through the compact logics, you can definitely see that it's the one that I have behind me since it has um, one single card. And from here, you can you can do different different things. You can also look at the driver diagnostics. You could look at the device properties and you know, confirm that the serial number is the same, for example, before you go online or before you make any changes to the program. So that's one way that you can configure your driver. The other way is let's go back to communications, configure drivers, and that's going to be through the second uh, driver, which is going to be called Ethernet IP driver. Let's click on add new, and that's going to be number nine. We're going to keep that name as such. And here you can either br browse the local subnet or a remote subnet. Now, of course, in a plant environment, you might have remote subnets, which are going to be, like I said, routed through a Cisco or a Stratic switch. But in my case, since, like I said, I've only uh, placed unmanaged switches within that network, I'm going to browse local. And what's really important is to find the right card. And like I said, since we've configured the IP address, we know exactly where that is. So I'm going to select the card, hit apply, hit OK. I'm going to close out of this window and scroll down until I see that driver. So that's going to be number nine over here. I'm going to expand this. And what you will notice is that the driver should scan all the IP addresses on that specific subnet. So right now it's only showing me the PLC which I believe I'm only plugged into the PLC. But in any case, this driver is going to scan that entire subnet. So if I was connected to the other devices on here through unmanaged switches or switches which allow me to route to the other devices, it's just going to scan and display every single device. And this might be useful in the scenario where you're working on your own, let's say at an OEM on a machine, and you want to see all of the devices in one shot, you don't have to specify address by address, and it just makes it very convenient for you to scan the entire subnet. So those are the two options that I use 
I want to say 99% of the time. If you go into communications and configure drivers one more time, we can briefly talk about the different drivers. I do use the USB driver, so there's going to be an RS-232 DFT devices. So that's essentially um, the RS-232 is a USB protocol and you can create that driver for USB. So if you can plug in to your device through a USB cable, which you can do on most Allen Bradley PLCs, then you can use that specific driver. And of course it would go into a USB port of your computer and you would have to check which uh, port it's coming out of and which uh, PLC it's going to. So you'll be able to see your devices like that. There's also going to be some Data Highway Plus. I haven't used this driver that much to be honest with you, but if you have Data Highway Plus devices or 485, then you'll need special converters. So it's going to be USB to uh, 485 or USB to Data Highway Plus. And there's going to be some drivers, for example, the SLC 500 emulator driver, which we've seen for the RS Logix 500 emulate. So that's a software based driver. And there's going to be a few other things that you can um, also play with. But like I said, in the field, I would say that 99% of the time you're going to be using the two Ethernet drivers that I've mentioned in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.